you know, Russell Westbrook is just on fire. And it's to the point where I just get, like, I get tired of people just, you know, t- throwing dirt on Westbrook name. It's like, all right, get, like, enough. Like, but you got to respect what this man is doing right now. And, you know, like, you can't even appreciate what Westbrook is doing because there's so much hate on towards Westbrook. Like, yo, this man is on the triple doubles list, <laughs> like, what he's, what he's doing. And we're not even talking about – in his whole career, because this is really maybe like the last five or six years of his career where he just turned up and was averaging damn near triple double. So these numbers and the records that he's breaking. So have, go ahead, go ahead, Eric. Go ahead, Eric. No, no, I, I wanted to back up your point there too, because you're right. I wanted to back up your point there because the triple double, the, the people are hating on him. He's going to end with the most triple doubles of all time in NBA history. His numbers, his averages over the last five years are 25 points a game, 10 rebounds, 10 assists. He's averaging a triple-double over a five-year span. He's on pace to get his fourth fourth year of triple-doubles within the last five years. The dude has been phenomenal, and I think sometimes we place too much value on, oh, but they don't got a ring. They don't got a ring. The dude is balling. Yeah. Like, look, I mean, this next triple-double separates him from Oscar Robinson, and he is the all-time leader in triple doubles. That is not easy to do, one. And if you look at the guys that are on the list behind him, there's – and I'm only, I'm not even going to say – I'm going to keep LeBron up because LeBron's only at – he has 99. But at the guys that have 100-plus triple doubles, it's Russell Westbrook, Oscar Robinson, Magic Johnson, and Jason Kidd. These guys are all Hall of Fame players. Russell Westbrook is a Hall of Fame player. Like, but we focusing so much on because he doesn't have rain, he don't have this and that. It's like we can't even enjoy what he's actually doing right now. This is legendary stuff from what Russell Westbrook. Like, we got to give him his props. Like, ease up. All right, he don't he don't have the ring, whatever. Like, let's let's be clear. When Russell Westbrook was in OKC, he was not the best player on his team. Uh, supposedly, anyway, but supposedly Kevin Durant was the best player on that team, right? It was Kevin Durant, and then Russell Westbrook was was second after that. So, and the losses that they took, guess what? Kevin Durant, as the best player on that team, was a large part of those losses because he didn't play well in those games. So, and then you have it where, okay, you want to talk about Kevin Durant leaves, Westbrook is still getting to the playoffs, all right? They don't make it out of the first round. But Westbrook is also an MVP there. He's also averaging a triple-double for the first time in, I think, what, 30, 40 years damn near at the time when he did it. And then is consistently doing it for every team that he goes to to the point where now he is about to be number one on the all-time triple-doubles list. We got to put some more respect on Russell Westbrook's name. I'm definitely taking them to, to win in this playing tournament. Him and Bradley Bill together – that backcourt, I think, can compete. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't listen with Stefan and Clay. If they if they're playing the way they've been playing, that 28 and four backcourt like that, where Bradley Bill is leading the league in store, scoring, and Russell Westbrook is putting up 20 assists, triple doubles, 20 rebound triple doubles. That is is a really good backcourt combination. They work together. If they had a big man up in there somewhere that was around All Star level they will really make some noise in the Eastern Conference. Yeah, I, I, I actually like their roster, though. I, I like the compliment of big men because you got a little ruggedness with Robin Lopez. You got athleticism with Daniel Gafford. Um, their first-round pick, Daniel Vitaja, he's out for the season, so he's not contributing. But they still got Roy Huchamora from, uh, what was that, two drafts ago. So That's they got boy. some <laughs> nice complimentary pieces. I, That's your boy. That's you know, your people. I, I don't think. Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't think, um, you know, we're not, and again, we're talking about them as a team that's going to win that playing game, which we both like. But I think, again, if their backcourt gets hot, they can put a scare in somebody, too. I don't think they got enough to win a series, but I yeah. damn sure don't want to be facing Bradley Bill, who's been averaging over 30 points a game this year, and Russell Westbrook, who's been getting a triple-double damn near every night. You know, that that's the last team I want to see, because that's not an easy first-round opponent. So, yeah. you know, we, we got to give Russ a lot of credit, man. And Listen, we got to highlight the haters, too, because there was some of y'all out there when he got that first triple-double who made it seem like, 
oh, he's just chasing stats. Oh, they let him get the rebounds. Oh, they want him to get the triple double. Well, what's the excuse now? Because we five years into this run and he's still getting triple doubles. You you telling me every every teammate just let him get rebounds? Every, every teammate team. is just helping him pump his stats? <laughs> or, on no. every team. On every team, they just let him pump his stats now. Because now the we're dude, talking about the dude is one of the teams. hardest working players in the game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's one of the hardest working players in the game, period. Night in, night out, you know what you're getting from Russ, man. Oh, no, fuck us. This is your African king of comedy, Michael Blackson. You watching real friends do a talk. Get real with it, my son.